Hi, I'm Tasha, the Wild Things Officer at Kuringai Council. Today we have Paul Safri with us, the uh, Ranger at the Council and also a uh, Sydney Wildlife Volunteer. And we're going to be looking at a bearded dragon. Here we go, wow. one bearded dragon. Beautiful. Although he doesn't look like he's in good condition. No, he's not. I mean, that's, it's pretty obvious here that he's not got a lot of fat on him. They store fat and all lizards have a lot of fat in their tail generally. And you can see his hip bones here. Um, and you know, he's very, very emaciated. We're not sure what's wrong with him. Hopefully we can get this guy fed up at the moment. He's only been eating mealworms, which mm. are wriggly crawly things that you can buy from the local Yum. pet shop. And, but he's, we're having to hand feed him and uh, that's a task in itself. The bearded dragon, um, while it's not found in Kringai or, um, you know, very common, uh, one thing that is, is the blue tongue lizard. And Kringai here we have a captive breeding program. Over the last couple of years we've released about 70 onto safe residential sites um, because they come under attack a lot from cats and dogs and they don't, they find it very hard to uh, survive their first year. So. The blue tongues are kind of the same size, but this is just a great example of the variety of reptiles in Sydney and um, the urban wildlife that we have. Oh, I'll just pop him back in, back in his bag. Thank you. Okay, I think he's had enough out and about today. Put him back in the, oh, no, it doesn't want to go in the bag. Obviously he's got used to sitting in our hands. Off you go, mate. Well, isn't it fantastic having Paul working with us at Council for Kringai for the residents? All these reptiles, how good are they? The captive breeding program, that's going really well. Yep. How many did you say we had? Um, we've released 70 so far. 70 blue tongues that otherwise would not be in Kringai. Yes. This is great. I mean, this is the whole essence of wild things, isn't it? Yeah, well, they, they're here to begin with. We're not introducing anything new, but we're just giving them a helping hand. How often in Australia can you do something for the environment that doesn't take a lot of effort but has fantastic spin-offs? Today I'm here with Taisha, the Wild Things Officer, and Elaine, who has turned her pool into a pond. But not only that, not only is she doing something brilliant for biodiversity, she's also helping the future conservation of fish in Australia. Well, Taisha, why are fish so important? Well, we just don't even realise much about them. I mean, most people don't know that they're in their urban creeks still, um, and they're just a great keep of biodiversity. So, Elaine, before this program, did you have any idea about the native fish? No, not really. So what sort of fish do you have in this pond now? We've got um, bass and far-tail gudgeons and Mary River rainbow fish. And what are the fish we're really excited about? The Mary River rainbow fish, which are endangered perhaps in their one location in the Mary River in Queensland. So if something happened to the wild population, could we translocate these fish into, back into the Mary River? Yes, that's the plan. We um, build up strong genetics in these pools and um, you know, if anything ever goes wrong, it's like a, kind of like a seed bank um, for fish. Fantastic. And Elaine, how do you feel about just being a, a normal Kringai resident, but being at the forefront of this sort of program? I think it's very exciting and I'm quite proud to be involved. <laughs> well, what about the water quality? Sort of, do you know anything about it? Not really, no. I, I just assume it's okay because it's got all the plants and the fish in there. <laughs> now, the, the thing about this program is, there's a lot of questions about how safe is it? I believe you had some news, some breaking news for EnviroTube to let the world know? Well, we were concerned about um, the potential of E. coli and other environmental health issues um, for the ponds. And just to prove that while Peter's been drinking the water that it's still okay, <laughs> um, <laughs> we took some samples and, yeah, the, we you know, lined them up against the drinking water guidelines well, and the recreational water guidelines and everything was fine. So this water is good enough to swim in? Definitely good enough to swim in. We've also got um, some really exciting news. We're about to start some actual research with the University of Western Sydney um, to assess basically, I mean, what we've been saying all along is that there is so much biodiversity, the safe keep and hotspot, but we'll be actually quantifying that with looking at the algae and the invertebrates, the insects that live in the ponds. So is this going to be peer reviewed research? Yes, it will be. Um, done by a, an undergraduate student, but it could definitely lead to other postgraduate work and being published. So this isn't Mickey Mouse, this is fair income science, isn't it? Yes. Very. So Wild Things, Wild Things is, uh, could we use the word cutting edge? 
I think cutting edge, um, breakthrough, and all those terms. <laughs> How do you feel about that, that you might have the saviour for this species in your pond? I think it's brilliant and I'm so proud that they're in our pond and I think I feel quite privileged that they've been given to me to mind and hopefully they'll do well here. Well, thanks very much, Elaine, for letting us have a look at your pool. I'm very interested to see what this research will tell us. Very exciting and we'll keep you updated. Well, thanks, Taish. Another environmental tube news done, done and dusted, and what a fantastic story. A normal resident doing something very, very different with an environmental program. You're doing great work. I'm really looking forward to how this unfolds as well. We'll definitely have you back on EnviroTube News. Mm -hmm.